Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Brian Stetlin, Chief Investment Officer with Equity Armor Investments, to discuss trends in the NASDAQ 100 volatility index and why the short-term pain of the commodity spikes could be a long-term gain for Western countries. Brian, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And I'd actually like to start with the commodity story first, because it seems to be the velocity and the volatility in that space really is what's helping to propel the movement that we're seeing in the equity markets. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, my heart goes out ancestors and family members related to Ukraine. So my heart goes out to what's going on over there. But when you look at the commodity space, obviously the production that comes out of Ukraine, that comes out of Russia in terms of crop production is enormous to the rest of the world. However, you look at some of the stock names that are out there, the ag chemical names that are trading out there, they're all trading significantly higher as if the U.S. producers, the Canadian producers, Australian producers are all going to be able to step up and sort of meet this supply that everybody's had this concern over. So I think it's a little exuberant on how high some of these wheat or corn prices have traded, because I think this is going to be a huge boom if the rest of the world has finally decided, hey, we're not going to deal with totalitarian type governments like Russia, and we're going to cut you out, then it's time for us to sort of step up and find other ways to do it. And I think the U.S. is in position and the Western world is in position to make up that supply a cram that's going to occur this summer. The mistake is we still haven't planted any seeds yet here in the U.S. So once U.S. producers, farm producers realize that, and I think that's why you're seeing some of these stock names trade so significantly higher, because I think they're going to meet that demand. You know, Brian, it's really interesting that you bring that up. And really, the trend has been for companies to globalize as much as they possibly can, especially right. um, retail companies, whether it's apparel, footwear, certainly fast food restaurants have made a big push into all yeah. areas of the world. Um, it, it sounds as if they could potentially struggle in the longer term if we are bringing more operations, um, especially when it comes to commodities, back to North America. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly the consumer discretionary that has expanded into the rest of the world will take a hit on all this. I think that's why you're seeing some of these stocks trade, you know, pretty, pretty significantly lower in bear market territory. And when you're looking to stock picks, we've sort of started to avoid some of that at the start of this year and make some of that rotation because there is going to be that rotation out. You know, they looked basically for imperialism, you know, push to all ends of the earth expand their product line. Well, maybe that wasn't such a great idea, you know, in terms of security for the rest of the world. And so I think we're going to start to see that shift take place. And that will be something I think now that we've gotten the ball rolling in that direction, I don't think it stops. Right. And and Brian, of course, everyone's asking, are stocks trying to find a bottom? It feels to me anyway, that this market might not necessarily be finding a bottom kind of market. And we will continue to see volatility because of all the unknowns. Is there anything that you see in the NASDAQ 100, in the uh, NASDAQ Volatility Index or VOLQ that suggests that there's more volatility to come? Or are you seeing any bottoming uh, patterns here? Yeah, Jill, I mean, it's a great question. And actually, when we look at the NASDAQ and volatility in that space, what basically traders will do is they will buy a put option on the NASDAQ 100 in order to sort of insure their portfolio. And a couple of days ago, we started to see these insurance players take that insurance off, meaning they were okay not so worried that their house is going to catch on fire and burn down. And instead of spending insurance, which typically drives up an index like VOLQ, a volatility index, is sort of like a fear factor kind of thing. Uh, We saw that come off the highs. And to me, that said, maybe traders were trying to find a bottom. I'm really looking at this 13,800 on the NASDAQ. If it can break through there, maybe that downtrend is now broken. We haven't quite got there, but at least short term, it felt like there was a bottom that occurred a couple of days ago. We'll just see if we can sort of make a, a sort of higher low, so to speak, that you know typical tech, technical traders like to see. That may push the NASDAQ higher, but certainly VOLQ and some of these other volatility indexes have come off their highs pretty hard, meaning that insurers are willing to get along this market and not have insurance on right now. All right, Brian, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.